Hello, and today I want to take you on a quick tour of the packet. The packet is basically a fundamentals-based percussion curriculum and is designed to help teach from beginner percussion year all the way through graduation of high school. And the biggest part of this curriculum is that it is a fundamentals-based curriculum. So it fits into any situation, at any grade level, at any ability level. So first thing you're going to notice about the packet is it's really big. It's got a lot of pages in here. So it's a very all-encompassing book or curriculum. And for the price, you get a lot of book, which was the first thing I wanted to make sure I accomplished. Okay. The next thing you'll notice is when we open it up to the table of contents, the packet is divided into basically six sections. You have the rhythm section, then chops, rudiments, mallets, drum set, and last you have the assignments charts. So when I look at the beginning of the packet, you'll notice that there's actually a little section where there's a lot of writing and a lot of words. And normally that's not part of the packet, but what I wanted to do is make sure that some very major topics were covered before we even get started. So in the beginning, it talks about counting systems. It talks about how to learn music correctly. And it talks about dynamics and heights and things like that. Each section of the packet has its own layout in terms of how it should be used. So the rhythm section of the packet is actually a chronological section. And so what I do is I always start my students with quarter notes because to me, the quarter note represents pulse or tempo. And so we want to talk tempo from day one. So we start by learning the quarter note. And then once we've learned the quarter note and understand time signature, then we move to whole notes, half notes, eighth notes. And you'll notice as I flip through every single page, only one new thing is introduced for each page. So I don't want to have you go from page five to six and all of a sudden seven new things were added. So if I'm learning how to play eighth rests, then the only new thing on that page will be eighth rests and everything else in the page has already been learned. That way we're not overwhelming the student, but we're building one step at a time. Another thing you'll notice is at the end of each mini chapter in the rhythm section, you'll have what is called a wait for it page. And a wait for it page just means that instead of having notes all the way down the page, we're gonna insert a lot of rests and a lot of silence and space. That way from day one, we can start learning what it feels like to subdivide or count in our head and then come in even after a long amount of silence because silence tends to be the hardest thing for percussionists to deal with. Also at the end of each chapter or mini chapter in the rhythm section, you'll have what's called a checkpoint. And this is a good place to review everything you've done. Take maybe a quiz grade or a test grade at the end of a major section of your learning. And then again, the rhythm section is chronological. So we get into 16th notes, 16th note permutations. Again, for every permutation page, there's only one new rhythm for that page. So I don't throw five permutations at you all at once. And then of course, at the end of that section, there's another wait for a page, then a checkpoint. And the rhythm section starts with quarter notes. We get into our 12-8 and three eight rhythms and six eight rhythms. We get into our 16th note triplets. Then we get into our hand speed changes, moving from triplets to maybe 16th notes or from five lits to 16th notes or something. And then the last thing we talk about are the different hemiola patterns, um, mainly two over three, and then we add in the three over four. So the rhythm section starts with quarter notes, ends with hemiola and hits everything in between that you need to get to. The next section is the chop section. The chop section is actually a categorical section. So in other words, you only go to the section of the chops that you need to work on. And for me, chops are basically all the skills you need to be able to play a rudiment or to play the music you're given. So it's the skills behind the rudiments or behind the music. And so what I tell the kids is the chop section is like going to the gym for drumming. We go to the chop sections to get a good workout. The chop section starts 
with page 2-1. This is the page that I use for all my beginner classes to introduce the fundamental strokes of percussion. And so this is the first page of the chop section. So it's the first page that we get to when it comes to playing our strokes. And we will start this page when we're just learning how to count um, quarter notes or whole notes. So we start this page early on in the process so we can introduce the strokes. But most of the chop section, like I said, is by section or by category. So here we have our rebounding stroke pages, one hand or alternating hands, which is also our single stroke rolls. We get into stick control with sixteenths and triplets. If I jump ahead, we have two height patterns with accents and taps. Jump ahead, we have the grid. Then we have rolls and diddles and doubles and all those things that we need to build up our skills to then move into the rudiment section. The rudiment section is also a, a categorical part of the packet. So at the very beginning, we have our list of all the fundamental rudiments that I feel like everyone should know. So this just kind of gives you a guide of what rudiments to be working first before you move on to the advanced rudiments. And as you look through the rudiment section, you'll notice here's the paradiddle section. So it's a, again, it's categorical. If I want to work on my paradiddles, I go to the paradiddle section. If I want to hit my rolls, I go to all the roll pages. If I'm going to work on flams, I go to all the flam pages. So all the rudiments are divided up into their own page, and it's all done categorical. And then when I get to the very end of the section, we have advanced flams where we're putting together more of a hybrid rudiment. Okay, getting it more complicated, applying what we've already learned in the chop section and the earlier in the rudiments. We get into odd meter flams and other patterns. And then we get into basically an entire advanced rudiments list of all the hybrid and advanced rudiments that you'll need your students to know, especially when they want to move on into drum corps or march and indoor and those kind of activities. All right, section four of the packet is the mallet section. The mallet section is chronological, just like the rhythm section. So I will teach the mallet section exactly how it's laid out. So we start with just the note naming, learning how to read the staff, how to name the notes. And one thing you'll notice about the note naming section is that there's no key signature on this page. So we've got five or six pages in a row of note naming with no key signature. So we start off by just learning the name of the note on the staff. We, we start by learning smaller sections of the staff, and then we expand in terms of the range and the intervals that we're asking the students to read. So by starting in steps, it allows me to tie it back into the musical alphabet a little easier. Then we get into more of the note reading, and this is a huge part of the mallet section. It's just note reading, note reading, note reading, getting them super comfortable with reading. Then we get into introducing the scales. So we do our flat scales first, because for me in the beginner classes, almost everything we play is in flats. So we'll learn the flat scales first. And then we have sections of scale etudes. Very easy to read etudes that are built directly from a scale. So it shows them how to apply key signature and scales into music. And then we'll do our sharp scales and the same thing. We'll do scale etudes that apply key signature and the scale into music. Once we've got comfortable with that, we move on to our musical etudes, which are all basically folk songs or traditional songs that all the kids will know. We have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, London Bridge, Yankee Doodle, and they are progressively more difficult in terms of rhythm and key signature. So what I did was I laid out these etudes to go in the same order rhythmically as what you're doing in the rhythm section. So the musical etudes will stay in the same chronological order as your rhythm etudes. We get more complicated, we get harder rhythms, we get more complicated key signatures, the songs get longer, we start adding more and more variety to the songs to make them more challenging. And so there are seven pages of just musical etudes for them to read. Then we get into the minors, we get into green scales, we get into arpeggios, and then this next section is for the more advanced players. We get into a lot of advanced two mallet exercises, and then we get into our four mallet section, which we call four on the floor, because we always start all our four mallet playing on the floor. And this section basically introduces 
the four mallet grip, the Stevens grip. It talks about laterals and independent strokes and um, it talks about single alternating, one-handed rolls. It talks about verticals. So all the different fundamental strokes you need are in here. And then we proceed with a bunch of exercises that basically will highlight one of those areas that we talked about. So an entire exercise built off double verticals. And within these exercises, there's a lot of music theory applied too. So you're asked to change the key signature or the mode or whatever it is on all of these exercises to really build musical theory as well. And then we push our way through all of that and then we get to the drum set section. All right, section five, drum set. The drum set section is chronological. So the very first thing I do is what I actually do with my beginning drum set students. And that's just a thing called roll call that I came up with that teaches them how to approach each part of the drum set as a musical instrument and then begin to put those together to build coordination. And then from there, once we've finished our roll call, we will actually get into our independent grids. So developing independence is essential, in my opinion, before playing any grooves. So we work our independence based off the roll call, paying attention to our tempo control, our balance behind the drum set, how we're approaching each part of the drum set with good sound quality and good technique. And we develop our skill of independence through all these different grids, 16th note grids, triplet grids. Then we have a section that I really like, and this is going back to the rhythm sheets and applying them to a drum set with all these different variations. So the first variation could be, I'm gonna have Latin feet. So I may have um, a samba feet playing while I'm playing all my different rhythm pages. I can do it more as linear drumming, where I'm passing the rhythm through my limbs around the drum set. I can actually create a groove out of the rhythms. So then I, make, I take the rhythm from a rhythm sheet and make a viable groove out of that rhythm. I can solo on top of the rhythm sheets. I can use the rhythm sheets as fills within grooves. Um, I can turn the rhythm sheets into swing by learning how swing style works or hip hop or Latin. So lots of different ways that you can apply the rhythm sheets to the drum set. And then the last section has our basically our working man grooves list. So these are all the grooves that you would need for jazz band or indoor drum line or just to develop your own toolbox of drum set playing. So we have things like rock or swing or syncopated funk, bossa nova, jazz shuffle, mambo, all those good things to get your drum set kids ready to apply this into a real setting. All right, the last section is the assignments charts. And basically, we have about 600 lines of assignments charts. And the assignment chart is just where you will write the date, what the assignment is, some notes about the assignment, and then when it's due. And so what we'll do is start writing, filling this out in sixth grade or in our beginner class, and then we keep it going year after year after year. And the benefit is that you, the student and you as the teacher can go back and look at the progress they've made over the years. So um, one thing I would strongly recommend is you also go to the website and look it over. You will not get more book anywhere for the price. And also it's the only book designed to take you from beginner percussion to graduating high school student. The packet, go check it out.